Can somebody tell me how it was possible that a 67 year old man completely outdid me in trail mileage when I was a 27 year old doing a section hike on the PCT? I'm gonna show you how that was possible. Today, I'm gonna show you a bunch of ways to become a faster hiker without having to buy new gear, just changing your tactics. And the second to last one's pretty controversial. First thing is to store all the things that you're gonna need during the day on the outside of this is going to include lunch, a raincoat, your long-handled spoon, anything that you think you're going to actually use throughout the day. This is also going to include snacks on the outside of your pockets. I don't know if you could believe this or not, but the backpack that I actually had on that section hike didn't have any snack pockets. So I had to physically go into my pack every single time to remove food and it slowed me way down. Next is to hike early in the morning and late at night. When I was on the John Muir Trail, all of the people that were hiking it used to ask me, how do you do so many miles during the day? Well, the fact of the matter was that they were starting in about nine to 10 o'clock and then ending their day by four, where I was starting at six and going at least until seven o'clock. Starting early in the morning gives you the advantage of beating the heat. So when you're hiking, it doesn't feel as difficult as when you're hiking during hotter weather. And same goes when you hike into the evening. Really what you're trying to do here is you're trying to get the bulk of your mileage done early so that you can cruise in the afternoon. I don't take a lot of breaks in the morning, I'll take more in the afternoon. But it's really nice to know that after you grind in the morning, you can just kind of be a little bit lazier in the afternoon. One of the best things to do when you're on these breaks is to do your chores. So that could be brushing your teeth, cold soaking your ramen for your meal at night, or it could be getting your lunch together. But as you're kind of seeing, the overall premise with this is not to have any wasted moments during the day of your hike. Next is to be bold and start cold. And this isn't just a winter thing. The reason you wanna be bold and start cold is because most of the time, whenever you're hiking, what is the first thing that you do about 10 to 15 minutes into the hike? Exactly, you're gonna strip your layers. And I used to do this all the time too. But now, no matter if I'm in the summer, or if I'm in the winter, I wanna start with a slight hint of a chill. And what that's gonna enable you to do is to decrease the time it's gonna take for you to take off your pack, to then take off a layer, to then put it in your pack, to repack everything, all of that type of stuff that is just time consuming and is the antithesis of efficiency. The other thing it's gonna do is make you not sweat through your clothing which is extremely important, especially when you're in a winter scene like this. The next one I got is super easy. So if you're making hot meals at night, when you roll into camp, the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is start boiling your water. As your water is boiling, then you're gonna be setting up your tent. By the time your tent is set up, the water is gonna be boiled. Now you're gonna dump that boiling water into whatever it is that you're eating. And while that's now cooking, taking eight to 10 to 12 minutes, you're gonna be setting up your sleep system. So by the time your food's ready, you'll have everything set up and you are ready to crawl into bed. Okay, our next one might be a little bit controversial, but that is to eat lunch before you are going to start climbing or get to the summit of something. You're gonna be deducting weight as you go up and you're also gonna be putting more energy in. So to me, this makes a lot of sense rather than waiting to the top to eat your food and having to carry it up there all the way and miss out on some of that energy. My next tip here is to make sure that you have a checklist. Checklists are gonna save your life. I can't tell you how many times I've forgotten something and I so wish that I had it on a trip and it'll make it totally miserable if you don't have it. I like to pack the night before so I have everything packed and I'm ready to go and ready to leave early in the morning if it's a day hike or I'm ready to take off on a road trip to wherever it is that I'm hiking. As a big thank you for watching this video, I have a free outdoor planning database for you guys to download that includes a whole bunch of checklists, ways to plan your hikes, a bunch of ways to be very efficient. We'll just put it that way. Typically I sell this for 10 bucks on Etsy, but uh, I'm offering it free down for you guys in the description below. I really wanna hammer home the, the concept of constant forward progress or CFP. Now, if you have this playing in your mind the entire time that you're hiking, this is going to lead you to be way more efficient in general. And those things are gonna add up day by day, week by week, month by month, into a giant pool of time savings, which will allow you to possibly do a long hike that you wanna do in the amount of time that you can actually take off of work. And I'm not saying that you have to do all of these things, but I'm just saying that it'll probably make your journey a lot more enjoyable. Here's a video that I think you're gonna like next. I know this video 
show is all over the place, but I hope you guys liked it. I'm trying to do a little bit something different with my videos, trying to make it a little more dynamic. Please give a like and subscribe.